apologies for the inconf the the frequency fucking thing that I've just done. Ah! I'll always be hot up on my Hey guys, it's X Dan X back again. Um, welcome to the long and overdue Q and A video. Um, I did originally do this a uh, few weeks ago, but I wasn't happy with some of the answers and some of the questions. Well, no, no question. The questions are fine. So my answers were going on too long and stuff like that. So I put it off and um, it ended up being a, a complete shambles in the end, basically. Um, but yeah, welcome to the long overdue uh, Q and A. Uh, really sorry about the uh, the frequency of videos lately. Um, it's gonna be like this next the next month as well. So I've got till July July first. I should be getting one a week or something like that. But for now, because of work, because of uh, college and work at the moment, I haven't really had much time. I've been doing a lot of Muay Thai as well, which is really good. Um, yeah. So yeah, apologies for that. So I'm gonna delve straight in. All questions I have put on my little Q and A on my little text thing. So it's gonna be uh, the questions and the answers and you said it blah blah. You know you know you know how Q and A works. So it's pretty good. But um, yeah, I hope everyone's well. By the way, I'm I'm fan fucking fantastic. Uh, I'm just recording this now before I do the pickups for the month. Um, a lot of good pickups this month. Like seriously, shitload of good pickups. So go on to that. Right, Mister Coleman twenty eight. Are you Everton or a Liverpool fan? I am Everton fan. I don't like Liverpool. And they've got nothing Well, I've got a lot against them. I believe Liverpool fans are glory hunters, and they always think that they're gonna win everything, but they never do. And when the 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 just forget about it. If it went for Everton, Liverpool wouldn't exist. And that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and you do actually believe they're still the most successful uh, Premier League club in history. Uh, Premier League, but England, uh, Premier League, most successful club in English football. And they're, they're not. In Europe, they are, but in Premier League and all that. And, um, you know, and if you'd add all the more man, you actually still want above them. If they still think that they're the most successful club. But um, yeah, I just don't get on with them at all. I I I, I don't. I, I'll go. I'll go to the match and that. And if like obviously they're playing, bit of banter. Do you know what I mean? We're friends and that bit of banter. But if you're gonna come and start my oven thinking you're gonna win all this stuff and you've won all this, then I'm not gonna talk to you basically. So but yeah, I'm an Everton fan. Basically, <laughs> uh, Inferno V2 asks, "What's your dream car and why?" My dream car probably is a Nissan Skyline GTR. No, 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 um, G GTR 34, is it? Yeah, the GTR 34 it was like, um, the supercar, well, the rally, not a rally, the supercar edition, the Nissan Skyline, and it's beautiful. <laughs> really do want it. Uh, Yaka1984 asks, what game sticks out from your childhood the most and why? Um, probably going to be Sonic the Hedgehog 1, as I did actually get a Mega Drive uh, two weeks after release or something. I think apparently it was like, what? 91 wasn't it so I was about one and a half two something like that I always remember playing Sonic and that and um, it, it'll always stick out in my mind I used to play for hours and hours I could never ever do it I mean only recently well six months ago I actually sat there took the time and actually like, finished off Sonic 1 so I got, I got all my Sonics out the way thanks to the Mega Drive collection um, thing on Xbox so that come in handy so it's pretty good but um, the number one that sticks out as well Airway Engine on the Sega Mega Drive, I really can't remember. I can't remember sitting there with this big old brown TV, big square box thing. It was, it was huge, and I had it on top of me um, little chest of drawers and that. And I'll never forget playing um, Airway MG and the fact I just couldn't get past the second level at all. And I really need to hunt that down again if I can. And a Mega Drive as well. I got a Mega Drive didn't I? So, well, I got the other one, but uh, that's not often. I'll probably stay there forever because I don't want to touch it because it's just nostalgia and uh, childhood memories. Uh, Games Keep asks what music do you play and what instruments do you play including or not vocals. Um, I play guitar only a bit though. I have reached, uh, I haven't touched my guitar in about 9-10 months now which is quite bad. Um, in this band I sing which is pretty good. Uh, it's the band's melodic hardcore. I put, I put, the, I put the, uh, the demo and the Facebook page in the link. Bit of, sh bit of shameless plugging advertising there. No, no, but yeah, I'll just put I'll put them in anyway, see if anyone wants them or not. But um, they're a good response really for what it is. So, but yeah, it's just more about the hardcore, like more than life and defeater things like that. I, d I doubt anyone knows who they are, but if you do, then 
good for you. <laughs> it's pretty good. And uh, he also asked, do you play Gears? And if so, how much are you looking forward to it? Right, I, I do play Gears. I used to play it um, when I first got the Xbox. It was one of the first games I played with all my mates and that. That and Modern Warfare 2. Eventually went on to Modern Warfare 2 because Gears had the, um, the host lag situation, the, the host priority, all that crap. So that's gone, uh, it's gone a bit... It's gone bad. Well, that was that was the worst part of it. Sorry, <laughs> basically. So um, yeah, I have played the Gears Gears of War Three Beta, and it's it's amazing. It really is. I couldn't experience no lag whatsoever, and it was really good to have the beta out so we could all have a nice chance to play it. And that it is going to be an amazing game. It really is, and they're going to actually finish the fight. I know that's Halo, but whatever. But you know they're going to finish it now. So, but you know, it's still in Gears Two. It's like, where's my wife? And like in Gears 3, it's gonna be, where's my dad? Do you know what I mean? It's just a bit weird. It's like, always trying to find someone. So, but it's still good though. I'm actually, get, getting to find out now what what's actually going on in it. So, I'm really, I'm looking forward to it. And I can't wait, really. So, you're really good. Uh, the completionist, a uh, great guy as well. I didn't even say. Uh, anyone ask the ask you questions? All great people, by the way. Just so like no controversy or anything like that. Mm. <laughs> Uh, what do you consider your best gaming things or gaming skill? Um, I would say my best is probably RPGs. To be fair, because I can sit there for hours and just grind and grind and grind. Because I just don't give up. I'd just rather just carry on and just you know a bit of bit of grit and determination to try and finish something. Do you know what I mean? So RPG is probably my best. Uh, PC. I used to be quite good at um, Counter Strike and Call of Duty too. I was actually really good at Counter Strike 1.6 back in the day. Uh, really, really good. I don't even brag. I, I, I will fuck it. I'll brag. Yeah, I, I was absolutely. I was really good at CS 1.6. COD 2 was good as well, but not that was good at CS 1.6. The the balance is completely different. Like CS Source, people say, oh, you can play CS Source if you're really good at 1.6. No, it's a completely different game. People need to realise this. <laughs> it's just worse. Uh, what was the best present you ever got for Christmas? Best present I ever got for Christmas was an um an Xbox in two thousand and two and the reason no actually no P no it's either that or a PS one but I am going towards the Xbox because I wanted the PS two originally now I think it was in two thousand and two, two thousand and three. I trying to get a PS two was like the hardest thing ever at Christmas because it always is, you know what I mean? Trying to get a console, they were quite hard to find aren't they? Not with Xbox and that not the Wii was, but that was because it was something special and saying to like families and stuff like that. So that's why that was a bit more hard to find near near the time of Christmas. But Xboxes and PS threes and that they've always been plentiful. Apart from maybe launch day for a week or about a good month or two, do you know what I mean? So not too bad on that. But it's got to be the Xbox and the Xbox. Dad got it for me in 2002, I think. And I was, I was, I was so pissed off the fact that I got it. I was like, oh, it's but you know, I got um, I got FIFA 03 and I got um, Conflict Desert Storm. And Conflict Desert Storm is one of my favourite games ever. I had so, I had so such low expectations for the Xbox. I was just like, oh, this is terrible. This is gonna be the worst thing ever in history. But it wasn't. It was one of the best console I had played console that I played my entire life. Great, great console, really good. I remember going out the next day on Boxing Day, um, finding Munch's Odyssey, Abe's Munch's Odyssey. And the funny thing is, I actually completed Abe's Exodus and um, Abe's Oddworld over like the hot, the Christmas hot, the Christmas break. So I was geared up for it. I thought I'm gonna buy this because Christmas. I was bought Red Dwarf as well, Series Four, which is good as well. But uh, yeah, Dad, Red Dwarf, great show. But um, yeah, bought that. And I oh, I'd spent a week, a week and a half or something, just playing which is Odyssey because I was so determined to beat it, and it was oh, brilliant. And that probably was the best Christmas present I ever had, and it really was. I truly believe. I was so happy to get an Xbox and the PS2. The one raised about PS2. A PS2 is a good console, but you know I haven't had one what a year, something like that. Like I, I never had one when I was a kid. I just swear for me, I, I always chose Xbox or GameCube. I played GameCube or Xbox more than PS2 by far, so yeah, Xbox best presents or the PS1 probably the Xbox. Yeah, the Xbox. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, what is the one game you would love to play that you've never had to play chance to play yet? Uh, Basugan, that's one on the Sega Saturn, which is a quite pricey uh, Japanese shooter. As there's, there's a lot of shmups, like a really a shitload of shmups I need to get hold of. Uh, Pachi, you need that really bad. They're all mainly shmups, there's nothing really out there that's really pushing them for me at the moment. Like I know Ellie Noir's come out. 
I've heard people say mixed reviews about it, but I'm not, I still not paying 40 quid for it. I mean, I've kind of been looking forward to it, but, you know, the only game I've been looking forward to, I'm hoping, hoping to get on launch, if it can. It's pretty, you know, money, money dependent, you know what I mean? You know, I've got to say what things, I've got to buy other things and that. It's going to be Duke Nukem Forever. Like, I remember, I remember seeing the trailer, um, the, um, the E3 conference thing on it, and, um, I don't remember Cybernet. Used to be like one of them, um, what's it used to be on? It used to be on ITV, but it was also on some other strange channel on cable back in the 90s. I think it was like CUK or something like that. But, um, I remember seeing it. I, I stayed up all night because I, I used to watch Stay Up for the Wrestling on the pay per views and that because they were on Channel 4 for a bit. So, I used to stay up and I, I was flicking through waiting for the adverts and that. And I remember I thought, I watch Cybernet because I like Cybernet, it's really good. So, I was sat there watching Cybernet. And um, Duke Nukem Forever comes on, and I'm like, wow, this is going to be amazing. Twelve years later, I'm still waiting, and I really cannot wait to play it. It's going to be one of the best games ever, I hope. Ethan's really interesting. Ethan's like, apparently you can use like most of your surroundings. Like, you can pick up a pencil and start drawing. Do you know, I mean, how cool is that? You know, a lot of interaction in the game, so that's what I'm really, really looking forward to. Really looking forward to that. Um, and he also asked, how is your band doing lately? Um, we're doing good. Um, we get, we've had a demo EP done, um, we've had a bit of merch done as well, we haven't practiced in about a month and a half now, which is bad, um, we're looking for a 24 hour room, maybe we can all like go in there and practice when we want and that, it's all exams at the moment, it's like a lot of, um, a couple of lads are on there last year, so they all need to finish before you go into uni and things like that, I've got this year and I've got to try and find an, app an apprenticeship, which is going to be the hardest thing ever. Uh, yeah, you're struggling with that at the moment, but um, yeah, you're going to stand up time. Um, but yeah, it's going good for now. We've got a couple, we've got a gig in August, so that's good. But we want to venture out though. We don't want to be that band that just plays Liverpool because that's just shit. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, we're doing good. Uh, Sammy, where do you see yourself in ten years? Sammy's boss, good, she's a good girl. Um, <laughs> she's a little wool though. The rest, of them, no, we really are. But anyway, I, I move on. Uh, in ten years time, I see myself in a garage working and just having a game room to myself and just the whole place covered in good stuff <laughs> really and my own house and things like that and the kids and married hopefully like, I'm at that point now where I'm just like do you know what I'm, I'm sick or tired of like running off the girls and shit like that you can come to me now go away I'm not speaking to you do you know what I mean so that's just me uh, Ash Ash 81 before you ask what PS2 or Xbox game would you like to see that I'd like to have seen on the GameCube um, black, that's definitely one. I would have really, really liked to see that. I don't know why they didn't put it in. I don't know why they ever really didn't ever release it. Because the GameCube is actually technically more powerful than PS2. So I was a bit surprised at that. Um, another one that I can think of. It, it needs more RPGs. It really does. A Kingdom, a, a, a Kingdom Hearts, maybe something like that. You know, get a little anime character. Um, anime thing going <laughs> it's basically so would have been pretty good I think on the GameCube things like that but um, Black's probably one of my I wish that came out on the GameCube that would have been really really interesting to see uh, Labrusu77 aka Owen asks Tim Kale with a question mark Tim Kale's a great player I, I, I think he's a really really good player he's strong in mid he's you know he's consistent he can set up balls when he scores you know, it's a it's a great feeling to watch him score because I do feel he is a great player. Um, I don't think he gets as much as much recognition as we should give him, especially from David from from um, the board. A lot of issues going on with the board and things like that. You know, he hasn't been as consistent this season, but in past seasons he has been, and he gets he gets a bit of praise. He doesn't get as much as he does. I I truly believe he he keeps everything together when we're playing. Um, he needs he needs people like Arteta and uh, Jack Roswell. So I always put uh, J um, Michael Arteta and Jack Roswell work well together. Um, they have they have done in, in the past, but you know I, I, I as on a on a on a whole, Tim Kyle keeps seven together. That's that's what I believe. I think he's a great player. I, re I really do strongly believe that. So yeah, that's my opinion of him. <laughs> uh, what's the longest number of stint you've ever had playing a game in hours or days? Right, if you're talking campaign, you're talking Final Fantasy. 
Nine? Yeah, nine. That went on for... Thirty... Two hours? That was straight, but that, that was piss breaks, though. So I thought, I thought I'd done, it was minor. It was very, very few, very few. It was one of them moves, I just thought, I've got to complete this. Because I got it on rent. I rented it from, um... Do you remember Choices, anyone? Remember that? Like, before Blockbuster. Well, Blockbuster was there, anyway. There was this little thing called Choices. And, um... I used to have all these, um... Like, rents and stuff like that. It cost me £4 for five days or something. And we ended up going on an unexpected camping trip. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I can't play Final Fantasy, you know. I spent all my pocket money on it as well, like four parts. Like, oh, no, I can't do this. So, on the last night when we came back, I think it was Thursday, and it had to be in by 10 o'clock the next day. So, we sat there from Thursday, Thursday afternoon all the way through till about 10 o'clock that next night. And I was going to mum, and I went to sleep for a day. But I woke up, I woke up Saturday night about 6 after the Friday, after I played it. It was just, oh, I had to do it. And the shit thing was, I never done it. <laughs> I didn't do it at all. I got to the fourth disc and I couldn't kill the last boss. Because I was just, I, I thought to myself, I need to grind. There's no way I'm going to do this unless I grind and that. So, but I done it in the end. And I had another time. So that's pretty good. Xfile2708, aka Marcus, what is your favourite subway sub? <laughs> favourite subway sub is um, a creation which I call the steaky, which is turkey and steak. With extra cheese and then a little a little pinch of grated, you toast it twice, and then you take it out and you put a, a, a thin bed of lettuce, you put four tomatoes and two on each half, and you get your sweet onion. You put a little, you put you put literally three lines of sweet onion, then you put three lines of southwest, and then you get honey mustard and just drizzle it, just like diagonal right right over the whole body, and it's fucking perfection. <laughs> Yeah, that's my um, that's my favourite sub. <laughs> Shock sixteen asks in a world of video game if if a, in a world of game characters were real, what game character would you like to go for a drink and hang out with? I would like to go for a pint. Wait, I don't even drink, do I? <laughs> All right, a beverage of some of sorts. I would like to go out with um, Barrett. And actually, uh, and, and, and um, just Barry from Final Fantasy VII, I just ask him, what are you doing with a gun in your hands? You just think you're so cool with a big with a big gun, do you know what I mean? That'd be one of the funniest, I've got a conversation with that, I'd be reminiscing about the fact how he lost his hand, and I'd be laughing at him, the fact he's got this massive gun in his hand, it looks ridiculous, but still badass to an extent, but... Yeah. And, and, and saying that about Duke Nukem, I'd love to go for a, like, a night out with Duke Nukem. Imagine that, strippers everywhere, fantastic. <laughs> and he's hard as well, so I'll be fine. <laughs> Getting to fight up bouncers and play some things like that. <laughs> uh, if you could direct a video game movie, which game would you choose to bring to the cinema? Halo, hands down, it needs to be done. One of the greatest franchises ever made in history. They need to bring Halo to, to, um, to, a, to a film, or Gears of War. And I would love to do the Gears of War one, because I, I really could see that happening more than Halo. Halo was just one of the, see, you didn't expect it with Doom, Doom was like, you should have left it, don't touch it, do you know what I mean? Like, the, only, the only good ones that have come from games into films that I can think of now is absolutely nothing. Because I've not just gone mad, gone blank, but I'm sure there's like, I'm trying to think how many games actually went to films. There's not many, is there? Correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, if there is actually some really good ones. I mean, I can think of movies that went into good games, like Chronicles of Riddick. They, that, and, uh, that, that's a really, really good game, so... Do that. Uh, you also ask, <laughs> are pickled onion the best Monster Munch flavour in existence? If not, what flavour it is? <laughs> no, they're really not the best flavour in existence. Barbecue Transformers are the greatest flavour in existence, hands down. <laughs> Intergoes, aka Adam. Uh, what game have you played tons of times but never seen to complete and why and will you ever get around to completing to it? Final Fantasy 7, I've never completed it. I get to Sephiroth off and he just has me off every single time. And I I've got a save on my modded Xbox now where it's emulating a PS uh, Final Fantasy 7. It's a bit glitchy but it's okay, you can, it's it's doable basically. And uh, I've got to the, I, I, I'm, I, I took on Ultimate Weapon and I battered him. A battered ultimate weapon. So I think you, I think if you can if you can beat ultimate weapon, 
you can you can do Sephiroth basically. I just I hate it when he goes into his second form and does that stupid uh, that ray of light thing and just takes all your health and like oh for God's sake, you know what I mean? Everyone just dies except one person. Hardest thing ever, but um yeah, definitely gonna have to really go battle for that. That's gonna be some of summer backlog. I mean my backlog now, I think I'll be talking about what, two hundred games at least. It's a lot of backlog. And I'll point to that actually, uh, Labrusso77, I recently watched one of his videos, um, he was talking about um, uh, games as collection, I think, collecting games, and or people that collect things, etc. And he mentioned that, um, I, I, he did actually say, I know I will never have the chance to play every game I own and complete them. Which I think I think's kind of silly, because I... You see, I, I know I am going for a full pile game collection. I am buying games and that because that's what I like doing. Do you know what I mean? But what's the point in buying them if you're not going to play them? I mean, I, I, see, I know a guy who collects figures. Like that, that's interesting to him. To me, it's not because it's just, it's just. I suppose in a way, to an extent, it's different than games. You look at games and they're on a shelf. It's not an art. It's just media on a shelf, just to pick and choose whenever you want. You got a statue, a figurine, or something. That's art. Do you know what I mean? That's something that you're gonna look at for a long time, and you know, you I guess you just respect it or really enjoy enjoy that. So I'm probably gonna cut down my cut down my buying. I'd say, well, not cut down, but I really have to start playing most of them now. Like seriously, like right, I need a back, I need a list. So I'm probably gonna do a list and then do like. Um, thoughts on them basically, so I have the good or bad, if they're really crap, something like that. But, um, yeah, Final Fantasy 7 will do it. <laughs> uh, Tojo841, uh, that's Jurassic Junkie's girlfriend, she's dead nice. I think her name's Louise, uh, jo- I think Louise is it? I can't, Joe, Joe, Lu- I don't know, whatever. Joe Louise or something, I think. I can't even know. <laughs> when did you love the GameCube start? When I made you go for a full collection? My love for GameCube started in 2000s and that well, launch really. I never, I never had one. Like I said, I had an Xbox. But my friend got one, Joe, and I remember sitting there for hours and hours. He got Zelda and uh, Luigi's Mansion. I mean, he got Luigi's Mansion first, and he got Zelda, and I was just like, "Whoa, this is some heavy shit. This, <laughs> this is so good." And I was, I was jealous to an extent the fact that I could never have one. Well, I could. Do you know what I mean? I had a paper round, I'm not going to say about 13 weeks of paper rounds, going by a fucking GameCube, am I really? But, so I was swimming. Um, but yeah, it really was, yeah, I was I was really jealous of it at first, and it annoyed me in a way. But, um, um, as I got older, but about 18, I remember going to a game station, and doing like GameCubes for um, 2 for 20, it was it 14.99, and any two games up to 2 for 20, and I was just like, that's amazing. I'm gonna go and buy one now, so I did. And I got a, a black GameCube, um, and I got Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and I got. I also did get Eternal Darkness, I think it was. Got them two. Resi 2 was there as well, I thought. Well, I've got Resi 2, you're on PS1. Why did I give. Why, why did I do that, please? <laughs> you know, I can't believe it till this day I've done that. I actually gave, gave that up for Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness, Eternal Darkness is a really good, nigga, really good game, by the way. Just that Resident Evil 2 has got more value and looks better. Do you know what I mean? So, can't believe on that back in the day. A lot of mistakes back in the day that I'd done. Should get done. I'll probably do a whole video on it actually someday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, full cl- um, full collection wise, uh, Interghost is one of the first people I ever watched. And I was just really intrigued by the fact he was going for a full collection. Him and Exiles made some mates, Exiles and his Mega Drive collection. And Adam in his game, well Marcus in his Mega Drive, and Adam in his GameCube, really did fascinate me. I was like, whoa, this 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 guy's serious. He's he's got some he's got some balls to do that. And like I was on to do videos ages and ages and ages and I thought, well, you know what? I actually want to collect GameCube. I'll start in January, so I thought, go on, I may as well start. I'll start something because I never really collected anything when I was a kid. I mean, I collected stickers and stuff like that. But this is something different. Mum hates it. She really does. She thinks it's ridiculous. Um. Like I was telling her it's just like a hobby, things like that, but she's saying you've got no space and stuff like that, which I haven't really, I mean, I've got, I mean, pickups are there, I'll do that in a minute, and, you know, I don't know where I'm going to put that, basically, so, that's sort of storage, um, things, but digressing, and that's bad, isn't bad, but, 
let's keep it. Um, I don't know what we're on. I don't, I'm not even bothered right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Adam got me into it, and GameCube is just a friend, really. So I thought I'll be going. Would you ever consider meeting off any other YouTubers? And if so, do you think you get? Who would you think you get on most with? I am going to see uh, Marcus X Files 2708 sometime over the summer. We've yet, I've yet to decide what day is going to be best, but I might do it when I'm going down to Heavy Fest in Kent. Uh, so I might pop up on the way back and go and see him and go in his local hall and stuff like that. So yeah, can't, can't wait to meet Marcus. It's going to be really good. Uh, another guy. Uh, about a doubt, the Bruce 77, because just just there's that sheer passion for football, a love of RPGs, and the fact of just Everton and Liverpool will just be the greatest combination ever. I really can't imagine just sitting there and I'll, he's, he's, he'll be having a pint and I'll be enjoying my um, my glass of Coke, which I don't even like. J2O, bottle J2O, yeah. J2O is the one, get into that, pretty nice. But um, yeah, I really can't imagine me, me and Bruce 77 just sitting there for hours talking about RPGs and things like that and football. Be really good, but um, yeah, definitely them too. Probably, probably most favourite is I'd say that to actually meet up with someday. Be really cool. Uh, if you and finally, last question is: if you could could have been born in any other year, what would it be and why? Um, I would love to be born in the 70s because I would love to see the, the, the what they call it the great video game crash, where people just weren't buying games anymore for about four years, something like that. That's when that. That's why if it weren't for Nintendo getting the NES out, they probably wouldn't have what you have today, which is a bold statement, but it's pretty much true. I mean, it's different because America they had consoles, like the Atari things like that. England had the BBC Micro, the the, the I think it's the Game Boy CPC, you know, Commodore. You know, they had the um, the Amiga thing. We had the Amiga things like that. Do you know what I mean? That was completely different. They're all computer based. Like over there, they had consoles. Do you know what I mean? So. It would have been really interesting to go into. And um, another one probably... I don't know. To north, the North East, I'd say. But that was an interesting year. An interesting era of stuff, really, isn't it? You know, so... I don't know. Yeah, probably, I'd probably say the 70s, to be honest. That'd probably be the best one to be in, so... But, um, yeah, there's all the questions. I'm really sorry. I'm going to do this Pickles video in a second. Get that out of the way for you, etc. Um, I don't know when the next video is gonna be. It, it will. I will be. I will be doing bits and bobs, but I'm not gonna be doing like anything as frequent until the exams are not finished. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I hope you're all well anyway. So yeah, I'll be next on X. And thanks for watching, guys.